How did we end up with four limbs? If you're a human being, two arms, two legs. If you're uh, any other, well, a lot, lot of the other, most of the, uh, the vertebrates have four limbs. So we're talking about tetrapods, animals with four limbs. The earliest tetrapod was uh, a creature called Acanthostega, and here's a picture of him. Uh, interesting uh, sort of newt-like creature. It wasn't very newt-like because he was about, uh, if I remember correctly, over a metre long, so quite large. And this is the earliest uh, tetrapod that we find in the fossil record. And the story as, at the moment goes that there is a creature called uh, Tiktali, who was a transition from a creature like Pandarichthys, who was basically a transition from another a fish, very fish-like animal called uh, Eusthenoteron. Now, these pictures look quite good, but you have to remember they are pictures, they are reconstructions based on fossil evidence. And you have to be careful sometimes because when you're looking to demonstrate evolution, you can make your creatures look a bit more like a tetrapod than perhaps they ought to be. And to just illustrate that, I'm going to actually look at the, some of the evidence in a bit of detail for this particular transition. So Tiktaalik was written about, published in Nature in 2006. Here's the title of the paper, The Pectoral Fin of Tiktaalik Rosei and the Origin of the Tetrapod Limb, written by Shubin and his colleagues in uh, 2006. And they produced some interesting work, and it's a nice diagram of their evolution of the, the tetrapod limb, in fact the front limb, because we're talking about the, the, the front fin, the pectoral fin. And here we have our four creatures. Here's the fishes, Pandarichthys and Tiktaalik and uh, Acanthostega. And you can see the reconstruction of the bones of the fins. These, these fish, this variety of fish had uh, bones in their fins arranged in different ways. And if you look where the circles are, you can see that uh, Pandarichthys has nothing beyond a few sort of stubs of bone whereas Tiktaalik has got uh, little bits sticking off the end of a bone called the ulnaire, not the ulna, the ulnaire, and it's suggested that these are the beginning of fingers in the tetrapod limb, or toes, if you're walking around on all fours. So that was 2006, and I've done a few diagrams to illustrate this in a bit more detail. Here is um, Eusthenoteron, and here we have uh, Acanthostega, and in the middle, you have, here we had, uh, up until recently, you had Pandarichthys. And in 2006, Tiktaalik came in and nicely filled the gap between Pandarichthys and Acanthostega. So you can actually see, if you look at the all-nair bone, which is the purple one, you can see it gets a bit smaller when you move to Pandarichthys, and it gets even smaller in uh, Tiktaalik, and it almost disappeared in Acanthostega. And here you have the bones which were suggested could be evolving towards the fingers. So, quite a nice story. Until December this year, when uh, somebody called uh, Boisvert, or if you're English, Greenwood, published Endoskeleton of the Pectoral Fin of Pandarichthys, and uh, I call this Pandarichthys Punches Back, because suddenly Pandarichthys uh, has has changed its status because this, per, this, this team led by uh, Madame Boisvert, she did a few CT scans and she, came, she discovered that actually on the end we have some smaller bones, which you can see here uh, edge on, and right next to it you can see uh, from the view from the side, and suggested that these small bones were actually what was going to be evolving into digits. But please note, that's why I've got the side view here, a copy from the paper that's published in Nature, these are flat bones, they're plate-like bones all the way through the fin. They're not cylindrical like your finger bones. Our finger bones, our digits and our toes are cylindrical. So these are flat bones inside the fin, stiffening the fin. So things have changed uh, as recently as December last year. And here we have the diagrams from the same paper with the, the same four species of creature. And note now that Pandarichthys has somewhat changed the picture. And if you compare the two diagrams from 2006 to 2008, some very interesting things come out. I look particularly here where the red circles are. In 2006, Pandarichthys looked fairly un-tetrapod-like, and now in 2008, it looks much more tetrapod-like. And this large ulnaire is actually broken up into smaller parts when they analyze it more carefully using a CT scan. So it's kind of a cautionary tale because you get something published and it looks good, it fits in a nice story, and suddenly, somebody comes along and reanalyzes the, the gets another fossil, has a look at it a bit more closely, and the story changes. 
And if you go back to the diagrams of the fins of these fish, or these, uh, these, these creatures, you have uh, here the transition again, and Tiktaalik is uh, there next to Acanthostega, and Pandarictes is in the middle here. And this is the new data from Pandarictes with these plate-like uh, bones which have been separated out, teased out, if you like, from the ulnaire. And now the ulnaire, instead of going in a nice smooth transition, it gets smaller then it gets bigger again. Uh, so you might wonder, actually, uh, if they're out of order. Now, there's reasons why you could argue that Tiktaalik belongs closer to Acanthostega because it has actually got features which are not usually found in the fish but are found in tetrapods, like, for example, it has a neck which uh, fish don't have, not as such. A fish cannot move the head independently of the body. It's basically stuck to the body. They can twist around a bit, but they don't have a neck like we do. You can move your head from side to side, hold your body still. And Tiktaalik could do that. But uh, as Boisvert actually admits in, um, in her paper, it uh, complicates the picture somewhat. There's no smooth transition now from the, the fish to the tetrapod. And more importantly, we're talking about tetrapods here. Up until now, I've been talking about the, 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 the pectoral fins, the front legs. So we have the, we've been looking at the fins and looking at the front legs of Acanthostega. What about the back legs? Here's a diagram, from, again, from Nature in April 2006, which accompanied the article about Tiktaalik. A nice uh, evolutionary transition marked out for us, diagrammatically from the fossil evidence. But look at the back legs. I've blown up, actually, uh, Acanthostega and Tiktaalik to point out that here we have a back leg which has got lots of bones which you would expect to find in the rear leg of a, la of a, of a tetrapod. And here you have the fin of Tiktaalik. So evolution seems to have forgotten the back end. So only the front end is, e end is evolving. There's actually still a massive difference between these, these fish-like creatures with rather stronger fins than you would normally expect on a, on a fish and tetrapods. And this is rather important. Because what we've got here, actually, is we've got a group of creatures that have been called fishopods, so a mixture between a fish and a tetrapod, but again, a bit like Archaeopteryx, they're a mosaic. They're not on the way to becoming anything, at least I would argue they're not on the way to becoming anything. So you have a, a group of creatures which have been called fishopods, which basically are fish with strong pectoral fins, the pectoral being the front fins, and, uh, and they are actually also, well, we don't know about the, uh, the creatures that the fossils, we can make a few assumptions, but we don't know they could breathe air. But there are actually fishopods around today that have strong pectoral fins and can breathe air and actually move around on land. One of them is the mud skipper, which lives in Indonesia. Very small, very cute little creature that runs around, quite difficult to catch apparently. Uh, and they, as you can see in that picture, is kind of perched up on its, on its front fin, on its pectoral fin. Another one is uh, the bishir, <clears throat> which is in Africa. And again, it, this one can get up and crawl around on land. It actually has lungs. It actually can breathe air like a, 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 an air-breathing tetrapod. But it isn't a tetrapod, it's a fishopod. It's got, it's got fins which are stiffened, which allow it to stand up. And uh, it has a lifestyle much like that proposed for creatures like Acanthostega and Tiktaalik. So here what I would suggest to you is we have another example, like Archaeopteryx, of a mosaic fossil. <coughs> or uh, a chimera. Chimera based on the mythical fire-breathing monster, which is a mixture of a lion, a goat, and a serpent, or a snake. And there are a number of creatures which fit this description. Basically, they're a, they're a mixture of features, like the fishopod, like Tiktaalik, uh, like uh, the therapsis, actually, the, the mammal-like reptiles. They're not reptiles, they're not mammals, but they have features of both. And reptile-like birds, like Archaeopteryx. And there is one living example of a mosaic creature, and that is the platypus that we all know, which is a, a, has a mixture of features, some reptilian, some mammalian. So there are creatures around. There have been creatures in the fossil record which are, we could classify as mosaic fossils. But the important thing about them is, well, I don't believe they are transitional. Uh, basically because, this is why I gave you the example of the tadpole and the barnacle and flatfish, you get a gradual change from one type into another to be a truly transitional. You have to have something you start from, you've got a midway point or several midway points, and a, a finished article. And the problem with a lot of the transitions, you don't have that, you can't show that sequence. 